So we're on our way to Voices from Both Sides, which is a celebration that's been going on for a couple of years now. Lajitas, Texas is right on the border, right on the water there. And just across, there's another little village that's in Mexico. And of course, years ago, before there was a border, that was one community with the river running through and on both sides of the river, people were farming and using the water and intermarrying and all that sort of stuff. Well, after 9-11, there used to be a checkpoint that, that uh, a port of entry, an official port of entry between the United States and Mexico. And after 9-11, that port of entry was closed. And that closure separated those two villages and towns at this narrow part of the Rio Grande River, which has been a crossing point literally for centuries. Indigenous people, the Comanche and the Apache, used to cross there before the Spaniards came. And then once the Spaniards were here, that was a, 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 an easy way to get across the river because it slows down and apparently it's a little bit shallow there. And so for the past uh, five or six years, there has been an event there hosted by the local community called Voices from Both Sides, in which people from both villages on either side of the river, people from Mexico and people from the United States, meet in the river. And there's music on either side, it's kind of a fiesta, and people dance in the river, and it's a celebration of the, the river as a, as a drawing together point instead of uh, the river as a dividing line. And so for the past couple of years, the Episcopal Church has had a Holy Eucharist that happens right in the river. The water is not in, is not in Mexico and is not in Texas. It is, uh, as long as you're in the water, you haven't crossed the border. And so we're going to do Eucharist in the river today. And just as we were coming down here, we saw lots and lots of Border Patrol trucks coming by us. And so we're hoping that there's not going to be a, uh, any problem uh, doing this fiesta again today. Speaking of the Border Patrol, just two days ago, Father Mike Wallens, who will be with me today on the river, by the way, he is the vicar of St. Paul's Church in Marfa and is helping look after the entire Big Bend region for the diocese. Just two days ago, Mike and I had a really productive meeting with the Border Patrol at the Marfa substation. You know, the life of a Border Patrol agent is not an easy thing. They basically have uh, two roles that they're often engaged in. One is to rescue people, and the other is to arrest people. And the tricky thing is that it's often difficult for a Border Patrol agent to know which it's going to be. You see some people coming across the border, are they uh, from a drug cartel bringing drugs across? Or are they smuggling human beings across? Or are they asylum seekers? So they have to approach with, uh, uh, without being sure which it's gonna be. Am I gonna arrest these people? Or are these folks in need of humanitarian aid and, and rescue? And part of what we've been uh, aware of is that the, the Border Patrol checkpoints and stations in the remote parts of the desert are not well stocked in order to receive 150 people, families, children, that sort of thing. And so we said to the Border Patrol there in, in Marfa and, and offered to work with both the El Paso sector and, um, and Marfa as well, that we would like to be able to help provide water and food and clothing and shelter for the asylum seekers that are coming across. If, they, if a group of 80 or 100 people arrive in an unexpected place and they need help, we'd like to be there to help um, quickly get that humanitarian aid uh, to the Border Patrol folks so that they can help those asylum seekers in their time of need. So we're uh, hopeful that uh, we can continue to support and care for the Border Patrol agents and their families. Because this is another thing you need to know about being a Border Patrol agent. These folks went into law enforcement in order to protect and to serve uh, on behalf of the United States of America. And their families are sometimes assigned to a new place like far west Texas. And when they arrive in the community, 
because they are a part of the Border Patrol, uh, the welcome and integration into the community's life can leave people feeling rather isolated. And so part of what we'd like to do is provide um, pastoral care and to help uh, the families of the Border Patrol folks in much the way that we provide help and support and pastoral care to members of military families. In both cases, these are people who are putting their lives on the line for us. I'm here in Lajitas, Texas, and the Rio Grande River is right there. And there are still three families living on the other side of the river, but that part of the town really closed down after the port of entry was closed. Some of those families, some people live on this side in the United States, and some of the family still lives across in Mexico. And the children from there used to come across the footbridge to go to school here in Lajitas, Texas every day. Now the town that was over there on that side of the border has almost dried up. And what we understand is it takes five and a half hours for the members of that side of the family to get across here to visit their family members. So once a year on the Saturday before Mother's Day, this event has been going on for the last seven years. It is called Voices from Both Sides and people from Mexico and the United States gather in the middle of the river, which is common ground, part of both countries and part of no country. And here they dance, they sing, they celebrate. There are musical stages on both sides of the river and one band will play from Texas and then a band will play from Mexico and back and forth for the whole day. Most of the times, the Border Patrol has not been present and only the county sheriffs have been present. But today, there's a heavy Border Patrol presence with helicopters and Border Patrol agents on all the ridges around here, keeping watch over what's going on in the river. I've got to tell you, it's a beautiful fiesta, and it's been an honor today to say the Holy Eucharist in the middle of the river. Buenos dias a todos. Viva México. Viva United States! We are from the Episcopal Church, and today in this river we are going to do the most holy thing we can do to bless this river, to bless the people on both sides, to hear the voices from both sides. Bendigan al Señor que en perdona todos nuestros pecados. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. In the eyes of God, we are all people of God. And today we celebrate that this river is not only a place of separation, but for many centuries this river has been a place of community. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Este es mi cuerpo, sigo por usted, gan esto como memoria lo mío. Siempre que lo verán, gan lo como memoria lo mío. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
just to give away. I got no business feeling the way, the way. So you know, the Episcopal Church is a great place to bring together people from both sides of many issues. And today we were able to do that by celebrating the Holy Eucharist in the middle of the Rio Grande River and people from both sides received. And we blessed the river and we blessed Mexico and we blessed Texas and the United States. And it was a joyful fiesta and celebration. For the past seven years, Voices from Both Sides has been a peaceful fiesta, petitioning to reopen the port of entry here in Lajitas, Texas. Today, we celebrate the Eucharist in the river of the Rio Grande, right here. But this year, for the first time, as we all saw, the Border Patrol was out in force. And now, as the fiesta is coming to an end, the Border Patrol are arresting people. I have been watching on this roadside as people who appear to be Latino or Hispanic are arrested and questioned. I saw a mountain biker who rode his bike up that hill right there, arrested. I'm not sure on what charge. And let me be clear, it could be that illegal activity is happening. That's possible. It could be that people are crossing the border illegally. That's possible. And yet today I witnessed a lot of the resources of my government looking out for and then this evening arresting the people who just hours ago were dancing in the river and enjoying each other's company. And my prayers are for this country and for the country of Mexico that this border will not be a place of fear for those who are simply going about their business or participating in their communities. I've had a little bit of time to think about what was bothering me about what happened on the river that day. And I think it's this. There was a real contrast between the strategy and tactics which were employed by the County Sheriff's Department versus the strategy and tactics which were used by the Border Patrol agents on that particular day. The County Sheriffs were a part of the community. They were mingling around with the people. They were eating the food. They were a part of the community. And it was clear that if anything untoward had happened or if laws were being broken, they were there to keep the peace. The Border Patrol chose to stand back along the ridges, wear bulletproof vests, and use what felt like surveillance tactics uh, to watch from outside. I think we need law enforcement tactics which match the situation that is unfolding. And I have no doubt that the tactics which were employed by the Border Patrol have their place, and that there are times when those are exactly the right tactics. But this day, to me, felt like a community event, a community event in which the community was both Mexico and Texas. Both sides of the river, both sides of Lajitas, were the community on this day. When you live here on the border, it does not feel like there's two communities, but rather there is one community on two sides of the river, on two sides of the border. And my heart tells me that the citizens of Mexico and the citizens of the United States both desire and deserve protection from drug traffickers and arms dealers and those who are involved in human trafficking. And both sides of this river want to have a thriving economy and a safe place to raise their kids. It was Jesus who, in response to the question, who is my neighbor, told the story of the Good Samaritan and turned the question around to say, who are you being a neighbor to? The question really is, who is a part of the community? And my sense is that we will all be safer when we all feel part of the community and where all parts of the community are being kept safe. So my hope is that in the future, this border can be more of a joining place, a place where we can meet to talk about both security and the economy. 
in a way that emphasizes and acknowledges that we are one community speaking many languages with many cultures, but we are all human beings and all children of God with the same rights and privileges given to us because God made us. And my prayers are for this diocese, for the great state of Texas, for the nation of the United States, and for the nation of Mexico, that we might find a better way to live as neighbors.